Hello, race fans. Welcome to another edition of Mazda Road to Indy TV. We are here at Gateway Motorsports Park, the 1.25 mile oval in St. Louis. Third oval race for drivers in the Indy Lights program and the very first one, the one and only for the Pro Mazda Championship. Lots going on in the Mazda Road to Indy paddock right now. Here's the update of what we're going to see here at the end of the season. It's been almost a month since we last raced at Mid-Ohio, and in those four weeks, we've had some great and exciting news hit the streets. In the USF 2000 series, we're gonna see a couple of brand new drivers make their series debuts. For Newman Walks Racing, we're gonna see young Irish driver Niall Murray, winner of last year's Walter Hayes Trophy and the Formula Ford Festival. He'll be running at Watkins Glen, while with BN Racing, we're gonna see young American pilot Zach Holden, top American Carter, and currently sitting third in the F1600 Championship Series. Great stuff happening for USF 2000. In Pro Mazda, of course, we're all excited about the new PM18 coming next year. Had a couple of confirmations from teams. Both Yunkos Racing and Exclusive Autosports will be buying brand new cars for the 2018 season. But right now, the biggest news here for this weekend is the fact that in Indy Lights, Kyle Kaiser for Yunkos Racing could clinch the championship. A lot has to play in his favor for it to happen, but depending on what happens on the racetrack, we may find ourselves with a brand new champion for the Indy Lights program presented by Cooper Tires. Oval racing, it's such a unique discipline. It's not a skill set that any of these young drivers learn as they work their way through karting. But once they get to the Mazda Road to Indy, they get a chance to get on these challenging racetracks and really learn the technique. Because if they want to become an IndyCar Series driver, it's a craft that they need to master. It's a challenge for the drivers, for the mechanics, and the engineers alike. Let's talk to you a few of them. Give me your thoughts on what it was like to make the transition into ovals. I don't know, it's difficult to say um, how like I got used very fast to everything, to the speed, and uh, but anyway, the ovals are so good, it's very technical, and uh, I like this challenge that the, the ovals bring to the drivers. What is unique about the technique that you found interesting, and how did you adapt? Well, you know, it's, uh, it's you no, know, it's everything like inches, you know, like the oval. So you need to be like in the perfect line, and you uh, you cannot scrubble too much the tire. So it's very tough to be honest. Like I think it's more difficult to drive ovals than uh, road courses are. In Indy Lights, we never use brakes at ovals. It doesn't matter if it's Iowa, Indianapolis Motor Speedway, or here at Gateway Motorsports Park. Uh, we're only using our right foot, so that's a lot different than. Uh, basically a road course racing right there so um, and it's the way you use uh, the throttle pedal how you have to slowly roll off it and slowly roll back into it on an oval where at a, a road course you're more dynamic with it to get the car to to move around more and get it to do what you want where at an oval uh, the car needs to be set up properly to do what the car needs to do and you don't want to upset the car in any way you just want to drive it from outside it looks really simple you just turn left and you, you back on gas and it's done but it's it's really complex to drive it's not crazy difficult I, I enjoy a lot because if, if you really if you think that it's an oval you get a little bit scared but if you think that two turns to the left it's easier it's a, it's a easy thing to, to think the whole car is asymmetric so different stiffness from left to right different tire compound the car is tilted to the to the left cross weight because you never brake so you don't worry about braking forces so it's everything is different also the mindset for us as a team is because you you're working in a very small window uh, you make small changes, and the driver as well. The driver has to be so precise, so much focus on line, you know, and then we have the spotters, so which is, are the driver's eyes. So it's kind of very interesting, and it's uh, just totally different than any, any road course. When you're learning, we want you to get flat, so we'll keep the downforce in. And then when you get the new tires on, it feels like the downforce, and you're able to still do the same thing. Get that driver confidence, that's the number one thing. A lot of drivers use race simulators to learn new racetracks. Do you find that a race simulator works on an oval setup as well, learning an oval? It's a very good question. I could pretend to know the answer, but I don't. Um, I, one of our drivers actually this weekend was at, tried the simulator, um, and he said it helped just in terms of an idea of you know, where the track is, what to expect, but I don't think anything beats the real thing. With two races left to go in the season, all three championships are on the line. 
Three drivers remain in the hunt in Indy Lights, two in Pro Mazda, and two in USF 2000. For all seven of those drivers, the pressure is most definitely on. I know this year is a completely different situation compared to last year. Last year I was to, you know, on the lead by 16 points before we get to Watkins Lens, and right now I'm 42 points behind two races to go. So the only thing I gotta do is win and then wait for results, wait to Kaiser to be to be out. So you know, this is racing, anything can happen. We show the speed, we show that we're quick, so definitely I'm going for the win. I don't think it's any more pressure than we've had all season. We've been leading, so we knew we had a target on our back, so I'm just going for it no matter what. I mean, I want to play it smart, obviously. I know finishing the races is priority number one, but I want to go for the wins too. That's the easiest way to lock this up, so I'm going for it. I've matured a lot over the years, so I, I don't really think that I don't feel like I'm the youngest. I feel like I'm, you know, just as old as they are. Oh, it would mean a ton. It would mean my first Indy 500 start and uh, hopefully a long career in the uh, Verizon IndyCar Series. I sort of thrive off the pressure and I think that's when I perform a lot better. Um, I don't know what it is, but just having that pressure to push harder and really maximise everything you can out of the car and out of myself, it really makes me push the car to the limits and push myself to the limits. It's a different way to think, like uh, I have to be much more mature than before, but still I have to be really aggressive to win races. So it, it's diff, difficult to manage, but I, I think I'm managing well. I think we have a lot of respect for each other. Um, we've I've actually raced arenas um, and carts for the last three or four years now, you know, and um, in all the championships I've come out on top too. So we'll see what happens. I just have to focus on the factors that are in my control, and um, I have the best team behind me, Cape Motorsports, best people around me, and the best opportunity for me right now. Mazda Road to Indy presented by Cooper Tires made its debut on the Gateway Motorsports Park Oval this weekend with both the Pro Mazda and Indy Light Series being included on the unique Friday-Saturday event schedule. When the race took the green flag on Saturday afternoon, we were treated to the fight that we expected between Martin and Franzoni. The Aussie led the way into turn one, but Victor was quick to attack, attempting to work the outside as Anthony defended the low line. Lap after lap, Franzoni would close on the straightaways, but with Martin defending well, an overtaking attempt could not be made. Franzoni needed to make the second line work, and he eventually held the top line in turn one and two to steal the lead from Martin on the exit of turn four as they ran side by side for one full lap. Once out front, Victor pulled away slowly to an important 4.696 second win. Martin finished second, while Team Pelfrey's Cunha posted his third straight podium finish. When the dust had settled and the points were calculated, Franzoni will head to Watkins Glen this weekend with a slim two-point lead over Martin in the chase for the championship. The Pro Mazda Series was joined by the Indy Lights presented by Cooper Tires at Gateway, and with just two races left on the schedule, Unco's Racing's Kyle Kaiser was looking to clinch the championship. The race did not get off to a clean start because of two separate incidents. The first involving Shelby Blackstock, Aaron Tielitz, and Neil Alvarico, and a second that saw Zachary Clayman DeMello and Garth Rickard spin separately in turns one and two. Once everyone's Cooper Tires were up to temperature and the race went green, Pedrahita flexed his muscles, leading the first 42 laps ahead of Kaiser, who got around Urrutia at the start. Urrutia would not sit in second for long, moving to the inside of Kaiser in the tighter radius turn one on lap 14 to retake the second position. The Uruguayan immediately set out for Pedrahita, who had built a little cushion. Urrutia closed steadily on the leader and made his move on lap 43, diving to the inside of the Colombian in turn one to take the lead. The third caution of the day came out on lap 63 when Carlin's Neil Alvarico got into the back of Chad Boat while attempting to lap the Bellardi Auto Racing rookie. The tango also collected Garth Rickards, who simply had nowhere to go and drove into the back of Boat Dallara. We were treated to a great battle for the win as Yuruti was able to get to the inside of Pedrahita. Yuruti completed the pass to win his second race of the year. With all the chaos happening around him, Kyle Kaiser crossed the line in fourth cementing a 31-point lead in the standings that means he will only need to start the race at Watkins Glen to be crowned the 2017 Indy Lights Champion. What an exciting evening here at Gateway Motorsports Park. Just tremendous action, really what we expected here on this challenging oval. But now we turn our focus to Watkins Glen International, the season finale. All three championships are now up for grabs. We're going to find out who is going to win the scholarships to move on in their racing career. Cannot wait to get to that incredible racetrack in upstate New York. Join us on the Mazda Road to Indy app for all the action from Watkins Glen. Bye for now.